Amen. I want just to welcome you again to Walking by Faith Ministry uh, International. This is the ministry that God has given us to serve in this earth, that God has enabled us to have this uh, ministry. It's a blessing to many. And we are seeing God changing life in the world because of what God is enabled us to do. And I want us to invite you uh, to follow us in this ministry in our website in walkingbyfaithministry.org. Face our website and you'll get more teachings there available to YouTube, to uh, blog, and to Facebook. I want just to invite you again to go to our website, Walking by Faith Ministry. Dot org that's our website so you go there you'll get more teaching it's going to help you to grow in the spiritual matters and you'll get to rule youtube facebook and you'll get uh, also our teaching in the blog and also we have put there a, a, a book you can get a book for yourself it's a good material it will help you to know the plan God has for your life. The Bible says God has put plan for your life. That's the, 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 the title of that book. And it's written by Minister Makrit Wafula. She is the author and God has used her to put his word on that book to bless you. So you get that book, you can get in hard copy or you can go to a book and download it to be yours. It will be your book and you will continue enjoying it. So God bless you. Before I bring the word of God, I want you to go to website right now. You can go to website and see our teaching as I'm preparing to bring the word of God to your life. And uh, you will be blessed. And if you want to partner with us, our invitation for engagement, we are available, we are ready to do the will of God. You can partner us in prayer and partner us in giving because really we are looking to reach the world. We are looking to touch many nations and we are praying for you, you be a blessing. We shall appreciate for anything you donate to our ministry, you will be a blessing and God, believe that God is touching you to touch the world. You are going with us in the world. Recently we are being in Africa and God has done a lot of things there for his glory and we are getting emails and um, messages from Africa from fellow pastors they are sending that God is touching people in the church men have been continue being healed most of them have been blessed and some that are receiving the message and coming to the church souls are still coming we praise the name so God let God get the glory for what he's doing so when you donate in this ministry you are touching the world. We have a heart to reach many nations as we can because of the kingdom. So God bless you. My name is Bishop Moses Wafula. I want just to bring the word of God today. Hallelujah. The word of God is going to come in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1. And the message today, God is speaking to us that he has set the land for us to go to take it's your land. So God is talking to us. He was talking to the children of Israel at that time that here I have set the land for you. The children of Israel, they were just slaves in the land of Egypt. Don't forget that's the story. They lived Egypt for 400 years as a slave. They worked in labor, hard labor. They were being mistreated they do more work for egyptians they didn't have freedom but it is god himself fighting for them and saved them from the hand of egyptians and god walked with them a journey to the promised land god was promised this land with their father abraham and he said i'll give you this land with your descendants so god reminded children of israel egypt is not your land Egypt is not the place I want you to be. Egypt is a place of sorrow and suffering and pain. 
but I want to take you out from Egypt to give you the land I promised your father, the father Abraham, the father of nations. So God was telling the children of Israel. So in this chapter, chapter 1, praise the name of Jesus, is, is the Lord talking to children of Israel. Chapter 1, verse 8, he said, See, I have set the land before you go in and possess the land, which the Lord swear to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them and their descendants after them. God, tell the children of Israel, now I have saved you from the land of Egypt. I have walked with you. Now this is the land. You know that these children of Israel, they didn't know where Canaan is. They, they, are, they have never been there because the, part of the parents who came from Egypt, most of them, they were dead. They were not there. 400 years, it was a long time. So these children of Israel, they didn't know even the way to go back by themselves. They need God. And they don't know how they are going to keep this land. It was a challenge to them. But that they need just to trust God was leading them. Like us as, as human beings or believers. We, when Jesus gave, God gave us a promise of Jesus. We don't know exactly the way. We don't know how we are going to get to heaven. But Jesus introduced himself. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. If you want to get to my father, I'm the way. So, so we cannot go to heaven for ourselves because we don't know where is heaven. Hallelujah. We don't have idea. When we ask people about heaven, everybody will give different answers. Because we just care about heaven. But it's only one person who knows heaven. It's Jesus. He said, I come from heaven to the earth. And I want to show you the way to go to heaven. So as we are hoping the promise to go to heaven is yes and amen. We are going to heaven because of Jesus. It's the way. It's the life. It's the truth. Hallelujah. So we have a promise like the children of Israel. God promised their father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that I'm going to give you this land. The land which is full of honey and milk. is a, a lot of fruits in that land. It's a fertile land. The land is blessed. God promised Abraham and promised Isaac and promised Jacob and you need to know when I'm speaking about this name Abraham is the father of Isaac and Isaac is the father of Jacob so he say I'll give you to Abraham and Abraham uh, you will give to your son and your son uh, Isaac you will give to your son Jacob and his descendants so in the land of <coughs> uh, 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 Canaan was the land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with their descendants. And I come to understand something over here. It, it, it becomes to challenge my mind that Abraham, he was with two sons. And one son, he gave his son through the maid. And this is Ishmael. And God did allow Ishmael to live in this land of Canaan. He gave Ishmael the land farther from Canaan. But, but the Canaan, his, he preserved for the child of the promise. Because this, all these things was in the promise. God promised Abraham. So when we are reading here, you can only see Ishmael. Because Ishmael is not in the promise. Ishmael was out of the promise. So he cannot get this land because he's not in the promise. This is the God's promise to Abraham. I'll give you this land. When he's promising Abraham, Abraham was with Sarah, his wife. So God was giving them the land. And the child of Sarah, she's the one who is the one who will be the promised child. So that's why you see Isaac here. You cannot see Ishmael. There's someone else you cannot see in this, in this passage. 
You know, God is a faithful God. And God does things the way he wants. And the, the way he said. Here, we get this man Isaac. And I'll leave Abraham. This man Isaac, he got two sons. They are twins. But in this promise where God is talking now, even the twin, which is Esau, is not mentioned in this. He's not mentioned in the blessed land. He was not uh, in the promise. But he's the son of, 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 of uh, Abraham. He's the son of Isaac. But the promise now go to the son of Jacob. Amen? You see how God do things. It doesn't matter that you born in the family of Abraham. My point is, it doesn't matter that you born in the family of Abraham, so you have access to go in the promise. No. The promise go with the person that follow the instruction of God. The, pro the promise go with the someone, someone who have a relationship with God. The promise go with the the person that God have appointed that you need to go with the, the lens of God to go to the promise. So the promise is not just easy. He promised Abraham but Esau among the children of Abraham, he is not in this promise. He's out. We get uh, um, we get uh, uh, um, uh, we get Ishmael. He's the son of, of the first son in, in the flesh. Abraham count Ishmael to be his first son. But because Ishmael was not the promised child, he could not inherit the blessing of the promised one. So he kicked them out. Hallelujah. So this is what I'm saying about salvation. Because it's a promise. And many people, they, they just lean. Even Israel, they just say, we know it's a promise. God promises us a Messiah. Yes, he promised them. But it's not guaranteed that they are going heaven in this promise because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No. This is a different way God does things. Because you, we just see the natural. He put these other families out. And he current only Jacob's children. It's only the, the Bible called the children of Jacob to be the nation of Israel. God is not counting Esau with his children. God is not counting uh, uh, Ishmael with his children. But all these people that the blood of Abraham. But they are not in the promise. They are not in the line of the promise of God. So when God promised this land... These other people, even the family of Esau, uh, they can be in the land today, but really they are, the, they are not in the promise. They are not supposed to be in the land. Because of what? Their names are not in the promise of God. The promise is only 12 tribe of Israel. The 12 tribe of Israel, they are only children of Jacob. So don't assume that because your father Walked with God. So it's automatically you will get the promise to go to heaven. Don't be sure that because you are coming from the family of Christians. So that you go to heaven. Don't be just fool yourself. That because my father was a pastor or a priest or, or a bishop or, or a apostle or a prophet. So I am carrying deep because I come from this family. I'm going to heaven. No. You need to have your own relationship with God. You need to seek this Promises. You need to know the story of Esau and, and uh, Jacob. What happened Jacob to get? Jacob was the youngest. Jacob was not the firstborn of Isaac. What happened? I, uh, 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 even even uh, uh, um, Isaac was not the firstborn of, 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 of Abraham in the flesh. Hello? So you need to understand. In the flesh, Ishmael is there. He can say, I'm the first one. I'm the one to my father. I'm the first son in this home. So I, I have power to, to get everything my father has. But the, with God's plan, it put him out. 
To be a firstborn, it doesn't make any sense to God. God go with a relationship. So this man, Jacob, he was building relationship with God. He was looking how he can get these things. He wanted to be in the line of the promise. So he worked hard about it. When you read the story of, of these two young men, this one was just father was fighting for him. The father... Isaac wanted his son Esau to get everything. He tell Esau to go to fast, God is going to bless you. Jacob worked for his own. He gave that blessing. Here, Isaac, as a father, he wanted to bless Esau, his first son. But the mother, she hear about it and she tell this young son, we need to get this blessing. We are going to work hard about it. We are going to risk our life. We are going to give. We don't care. Well, he's, he's, uh, Jacob tell uh, Rebecca, her mother, his mother, say, my mom, you know my father will cast me. I will, I will be in, in problem with my father recognize that I'm not Esau. I'm lied to him. But she said, no, I don't want it to miss because she know what is coming. The power of God is going to the firstborn. And here uh, Jacob already has gained the firstborn. And she knows that the blessing is in, in, in Jacob. So she wanted Jacob to get everything. Hallelujah. She managed it. She worked hard and she came. it. So that salvation is the part we have to work on our side. Because it's not automatically that you will just be sitting there and waiting to go to heaven. You can just be just there and thinking, I'll be going to heaven. No. Heaven is a relationship. Mm -hmm. Heaven is to walk with God. Mm -hmm. Heaven, you need to be in the promise. Mm -hmm. What is the promise? Jesus say, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. If you want to go to heaven, you need to know him. You need to be in him, and him you need to be in you. So when he calls him, the spirit of God, which is in you, he will answer the call. He will say, yes, I am Lord. You will know the day of the Lord calling you. You know the day the Lord wants you to go to heaven. You will know, you will be awake. You will be alert because you are in a relationship. You will know Jacob was in relationship. When even he is running in front of the face of his father, he was trusting God. He tell God, you know, God, I'm going to the, the place I don't know. But if you take care of me, going and coming back alive to my father's house. I will sacrifice for you. I will give you. I will wash for you. I will, I will honor you. Me I with my children. We shall go bow down before you. And the promises he was putting to God, God honored. And because God see the relationship, Jacob walked with God. Amen. Amen. Even when he was going to, to Egypt, God was with him. When even he, he still lived in Egypt, when even he died in Egypt, God was still with him because he was with relationship. So here the children of Israel, God is telling them, now I've set the land before you, go and get it. Go and inherit the land that I promised your father. He reminded them, I promised your father, this land you need to go to occupy, you need to go to, to possess. This is yours. We have a promise than the land of Canaan. We have a big promise than that. A promise of internal life. God has promises through his son. He said, through my son, whoever believe him, he will have internal life. So when you believe Jesus, when you come in Jesus, you are, you are coming to the promised land. The promise that you will never end up. The promise which will never be destroyed. The promise that we will endure forever. The promise that God has given us in his son. He will never change his mind. Whatever comes to Jesus is received to be in the kingdom of God. So today, I want just to encourage you to read this word. That Jesus of Nazareth is there as a promise. This old promise, it was for Jesus. When God is promising Abraham... He is talking about Jesus. But he need to bring the way. Isaac was just the way. Jacob was just the way to bring Jesus. But when Jesus came, he said, I'm not the way. 
We don't need to go through Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac and Jacob. We now go through Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. The kingdom now is not for us any other. All these people were just a way to bring the true way. The only way to bring what? The true way. The true way was what? Was Jesus. Hallelujah. So, we look in the, in the book of uh, another book in, uh, in, in Hebrews chapter 6. Now the Bible says to us in chapter 6 verse 13 and, and 14. The Bible says, for when, for when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one, rather he swear by himself. When God was making this promise, you know, when we are, we are seeing like we are innocent, if we see like we don't have anything against us, and people are accusing us. We need down and say, I swear before God. I swear before heaven. Are you going to buy me in the, in the court? They ask you, are you a Christian? Yes, you hold the Bible. I swear through this Bible. What I'm going to speak through in this court is, is truth and the truth alone. So here, God was <laughs> promising Abraham. And God want to swear. God want to make sure Abraham get it right. So he, he wanted to swear to Abraham that he would never change what matter happens. God will never change for his promise. He will never, because he has any other to swear. He swear by himself. Amen? He promises Abraham and he swear by himself because he don't have any other. He didn't have any other God. He didn't have any other bigger man like him. He didn't have any other heaven. He didn't have anything which is bigger than God. So God could not swear for anything. Some people swear from my mother's womb. I say the truth. They swear for anything. But here God cannot swear for anything. He swear for himself. He say as I live, I told you Abraham the truth. Don't doubt me. Don't be shaken. Don't be with, uh, with other thinking. I'm sure swearing by myself as I live. These promises I'm promising you today is going to pass. It will happen. It doesn't matter what. That's why when even Abraham messed up on the way, God didn't cancel the promise. People can accuse Abraham for his fault. They can say you, you didn't believe God. They can say you 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 got against God. Why did you get Ishmael? As human being, why did you do that? They can say so many things to Abraham. They can put Abraham down, but not before God, because God will never change the promise. The promise must come to pass. He said, and yes, it's a man. He will never change. God said, I will go to bless you, and you are the blessed. Abraham was a blessed man. And God said, I'll give you this land for your descendants. God make sure Sarah in the old age she get Isaac and Isaac he get uh, uh, Esau and Jacob and through that Jacob God give the land for the children of Israel that's the promise and from children of Israel we get the common promise Jesus Christ from the family of Judah the children of Jacob we get Jesus the Messiah Hallelujah. So we get him and he just come. That's the promise. Amen. So in verse 14 he said, saying surely blessing, I will bless you and multiply, multiplying, I will multiply you. God is saying when our children of Israel, they believe God by swearing, Surely God has said, and he's saying to us today, he is going to bless us. Because he, those who were cursed, they are not cursed. They are not in trouble. The sickness is not in us. Death even is not in us. Problems are not in us. 
Hallelujah. Because of what? The blessing God is speaking here. Surely I'm going to bless you. The blessing means not only material things. The blessing means the life you have. You, you live in the sanctification of, of the life. You live in the fullness of life. You live to enjoy. These things that people, they are in the promise, but they don't understand. They are living like children of Israel. Because children of Israel, they didn't know that they are in the promise. They, that they have the land. They are living in Egypt in, 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 in punishment. But they didn't know that we have the land to possess. We have our own home. So some Christians, we live like that. That we don't have right. We are not blessed. We are crying all the time, God bless me, God bless me. God has already blessed you. From the promise. We are in the promise. We are in the good governor. We are going with the government with them. God do more things with Abraham. He promised Abraham. They went in a covenant with God. So that's why God swear in this covenant he said, I will never change. I will remain the way I say. So God said to believers, I will never change. As soon as you cross and believe my son, you are coming to the new governor. This new governor is better than the governor that made to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Hallelujah. We are in the better covenant so that healing is ours, prosperity is ours, blessings are ours. And why are we struggling in the Christian life? Because we don't know that we have it. That's the problem. We don't know that we have already came in. We don't know that we have it. So we struggle. Because of what? We don't know that the children of Israel, they don't know. They are doubting God. They are not sure if this God is taking them in the promised land. Even when God does miracles, when God part the sea, the children of Israel that were still doubting God, asking Moses, sure, why are you they bring us here? They didn't see God, they just see Moses to be the leader. They just asked Moses questions. Sure, God, I've told you we are going to the blessing land. How that land looks like? Is it just empty land? It's just for us? No, it's not empty land. The land was with the people, with the Canaanites and other tribes out there. The land was not empty. The land was full with people. So, but God, I promise you. So when God promised you, it doesn't mean that it's just empty. It's just there for you. No, he had promised you, but he wants you to trust him so that he can make a way. He can clear everything for you. And then you possess the land. Surely God made the children of Israel to possess the land? Yes. They're there. It has been now years since they ended end in that land. And they have settled. You cannot hear anybody else. They say this land belongs to somebody else. Everybody knows that the land now belongs to the Israel. Where the Canaanites? Where are they? We are the children of 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 of, 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 of Where they are, then the land, but they will never be recognized because the land is not theirs. They were not in the promise. Where the Hebrew people, there's other Hebrew people there. Where they are, they are there. Hallelujah! But they are not recognized. The land is not them. It's not for them. We have many tribes in 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 in, in, in Israel land, but the land is known by the Jewish people because of the promise. That's how it's going to happen. We live in this earth. We live with many people, but the promise is for only for the saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what you need to put in your mind. The saints are only the ones who have right to claim for anything from the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God are prepared for them. It's not for everybody. Uh -uh. Many people in this world, everybody's thinking that I'm going to heaven. I want to tell you what. That's your thinking. Remember, this is have already happened in the land of Israel. There's other people in that land, but they are not recognized. That's how you are 
in this kingdom of God. If you don't know Jesus, if Jesus is not in your life, you don't have any relationship with him, forget about heaven. Don't think about it. Even, even people say you are going there, you need to know that I'm not going. Because you, how are you going there? There is no other way. The religion cannot take you there. We can pray for you. We can wish you to go to heaven. But I'm telling you the truth. We are not going to help you to go to heaven unless we tell you about the Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Because there is no any other way to go to heaven. We cannot go through shortcut. There is no shortcut way. There is only one way. To go to heaven. And this way is Jesus. Amen. That's the promise is. Gee, God say, I'm going to give you a promise. A promise I'm going to give you Messiah. The person who will come to redeem you. Who will come to save you from mankind. Who will come to forgive your sin. Who will pay you a debt in the cross. And Jesus did that for us. It's only one who went to cross because of the sin of people. There's no point as other people are being sacrificed on the cross. That, that it doesn't matter, they died for nobody. They died for themselves. They didn't die for you. They didn't die for me. They didn't die for the world. They died for themselves, for their problem. So Jesus is the only one who died for everybody. He who died for everybody who believe in him. And those who don't believe in him, they don't have chance. They don't have chance. If they, they, the day your heart stop beating, brothers and sisters, I'm telling the truth. If your heart stop today and you have not made a commitment to receive Jesus, you need to know that you have no chance. You have no chance. The chance is up to you are still breathing. The chance you can say, forgive me, Lord. And God is merciful. He will forgive you even the last minute. But if you shut down that breath God out of you, you have not made a commitment with Jesus. You are missing the promised land of heaven. You are missing the promise of the kingdom. It's not that we are telling you you are going to miss. It's not that we are charging you and we tell you this. Is this the truth that the word have already tell us that was so believe in Jesus, they have in done life. What about those who reject him? They have already charged. So we are not charging you when we are telling the truth. The truth is, we can do whatever you are doing when you are alive. But when you die, you are not going to do nothing. Other people, Jesus told this Peter, he said, Peter, when you are alive, you can wear yourself and go wherever you want. Why God was telling, Jesus was telling Peter about this story? Because Peter was following Jesus, but his hand is in the sea. He was still thinking about fishing. So Jesus see that man in Peter. And he told Peter, my friend, let me tell you one thing. When you are still alive like this, you can wear and tie yourself and go wherever you want. But the time will come that you cannot wear yourself. People will dress you. People will put your hand together. And people will take you wherever you don't want to go. Nobody wants to go in the grave. Nobody. But because you cannot defend yourself in that moment, you have no say. Even the things people say, they are saying in your behalf. They may say the truth or lie. It doesn't matter. Because you cannot defend yourself. You are dead. So that moment, before it comes, before that moment comes, you have a chance. Your case, you can take case to Jesus, who is a good magistrate, who is a good lawyer. You can plead your case and he will stand for you and he will clear your case and he will be in the safe side because he come for that purpose that nobody could be lost. Nobody could go to hell. Nobody could die in sin. Jesus came for that reason. That's why I'm telling you this word of Jesus. That he died for you. As he walked, God walked to the children of Israel. We are walking a channel of salvation with Jesus Christ. Towards heaven. And the case of heaven is already open. The doors are already open. For the saints. When, they, when we shall step in the case. Angels of heaven, they will be clapping, saying, Your name is written in every corner of this 
kingdom. You will see your name widely. You are welcome. Come in, in home. Come in church. Enjoy the blessing. You have been crying on the world. We have suffered a lot. We have been with, with problems. We, we have suffered in many ways. But no more. You just come in the joy of the Lord. So we shall be rejoiceful. You just open your heart. Enemy can tell you, don't love Jesus. Many people, they don't love Jesus. They don't praise Jesus. They just quiet. They just see like you praising Jesus is nothing. What are you going to do in heaven? Because heaven, you will see 24 hours is to say holy, holy, holy. It's just to praise. If you don't have practice in this earth, what are you going to do it? Hallelujah. Because in this earth, we can have a service of 30 minutes. It's okay. We, are, we can have a service of one hour. It's okay for us. And we rush somewhere. We do other things. But in heaven, the business is to praise the Lord. He's in the throne. He's sitting there. He needs people to pour down before him. Say, holy, 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 holy. 24 hours, you are in your knees. You are just praising God. You are shouting for him. He needs that shout. He needs to hear your voice. You will never be quiet in heaven. Hallelujah. Because of what? The joy of the Lord is there. It cannot enable you to be silent. There you will praise the Lord. You will be happy. So we need to have that kingdom starting here. We need to charm, praise God, yell to God, uh, shout to God, hallelujah. That's why David as a praiser who know how to worship God, he said, let us shout for the Lord. Let us praise. And you remember one day David, he went to bring the ark of the covenant of God and he was singing and praising God in the city and the crowns started falling down from him. He didn't care about it. He didn't care what people would say. He want what he was caring is to praise God. We need just to praise the Almighty God because we have any other. If you have your God in your room, it's okay. Just praise that God, but that God's a dead God. He has no right. You can have statue. You can have things you worship. You can worship in this time, but where you are going, I want to assure you, you will never solve those things. You will never see it. You will see something different. So you need to know that I cannot believe in anything else. Let me just believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one God give him only. If we don't have any other son. We have only one son, which is Jesus Christ, who is God himself, who came from heaven and died for us. So God bless you for this message. I know it has blessed your heart. It has blessed me and I believe it has blessed your heart. And if you have a problem, you are sick, you are stressed, I want to tell you, turn your stress to Jesus right now. Turn your sickness to Jesus. He's the healer. He's going to heal you for free. You are not going to pay him nothing. He don't want you to give anything for him to heal you. He is going just to heal you for freely. You just come. If you don't have anything to eat today, don't worry about it. Jesus is the bread of life. You just believe him. He's going to feed you, dress you, and nurse you, and make you happy. Because he does his work. That's his God's work. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray and I believe for my believers, for those who are believing in your name, that Jesus Christ, you are the Son of God, you died for them. I want to pray, Father, for those who are sick in the name of Jesus, that God and sickness, it has no power for them. It is not going to put them to death. That sickness is something from the devil. And I want to rebuke that sickness right now to go because you say God in your word that you have given us power and authority to lay hands on the sick people and they will recover in every sickness they have. I want to declare that they are getting healed right now. It's not that they, they will struggle with it no more. They are getting out of that sick bed and be alive and praise your name. I'm praying by faith, believing for the healing, that Jesus was the healer. You were just died in the cross because of that. You are all strapped and we are healed. 
Father, we I declare people to get healed. I declare people to get opportunity of job opportunity. I pray, I pray and declare that people get open eyes to have businesses and prosper because that is the promise. You say you are going to bless us and you say God in the word and we believe the word and we believe that we have blessed the people for the kingdom of heaven and we want to thank you Jesus for this day. Those who are struggling with marriages are marriages began with you and I want to speak that that marriage to be healed right now in the name of Jesus let joy and peace come in that marriage, let them come together and enjoy their life together again thank you Jesus for hearing our prayer and answering the prayer for this day, in Jesus name I pray and I want to ask the one who wants to believe Jesus I don't want us to get out from here without giving you this opportunity, helping you to know that Jesus still loves you. He wants you to be in the kingdom. And you can believe and pray this short prayer and Jesus will come in your life. He will be your friend forever. He will change your life. Pray like this. Say, Jesus, I come before you. I ask you to come to my heart. I just open my heart for you. And I know I'm a sinner. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive my sin. I've sin greatly before you, but this day I surrender in your upper hand. Forgive me and wash my sin. And I want to invite you, Jesus, to, to change me to become a born again spirit. Because this flesh is going to die, but the spirit will live forever. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. Thank you, Lord. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for you being my there for me. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. You are saved and you are free in Jesus' name.